Hello, hello! You are watching the Amuse of Maverick channel, I'm your host Maverick, and today we are going to be continuing our watch of Your Lie in April with episode 6. So, last episode, uh, basically, Kari got Kosei back on his feet, and, well, can we really say that? Supposedly, anyways, supposedly. Uh, got him back on his feet, gave him a push, whatever metaphor you want to use, and apparently he's agreed to entering a piano competition now. So, sort of like fighting off his demons and really actively playing the piano again. Now, obviously, I don't think that things are going to be this easily resolved. He probably still has a lot of issues with him, which we'll probably learn about a little bit more as we try, as Kari and perhaps some others try to help him solve or overcome these you know, these doubts, these fears, these emotions, and get back on track, right? So, are we going to be seeing the actual competition within this episode? Maybe, maybe not, not really sure, but um, we'll see, right? We'll see. There's also this entire romance subplot going on, but um, I'm not going to comment too much on that. It's still way too early. I think the best thing to do would be to just get into the episode. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1... Play. Okay. Okay. Now for a second there, I thought, um... Snap. Holy crap, what did you guys do? Now for a second there, I thought that... Um, it was turning back time to when Kosai's mom died. <laughs> okay. So basically up to some mischief again. Well, kids will be kids. Ah, here we go. The opening. Alright, I'll skip this part for you guys and I'll see you guys in a second. And back. Oh. <laughs> okay. Dang. Taking a girl home, Kosei? He got some game. The music room. Okay, I can already, of course, predict what's gonna happen here. Just gonna like clean up the entire room. Yep, there we go. It's like play. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's the next day already? Ah, oh, that's no fun. <laughs> Damn it. I want to see what happened last night. Dang it. Hmm. Alright. Yeah. Starting a competition with Chopin? Seems about right. An itude, right? <sighs> then again, that, again, that's pretty par for the course. Etudes are meant to be technically different pieces. Um, basically, instead of an actual song, it's more meant to be sort of a um, technical challenge, warm-up, if you will. <laughs> I 
So that's how Japanese say Chopin, Chopin. <laughs> oh, the uh, the window's broken still. This. Mom? Doesn't sound too bad, actually, right now. Oh, actually, I think I know this one. Is this a uh, wrong notes? I believe it's called wrong notes. I mean, it's hard. I think it's supposed to be that, anyways. So the reason why I say it's wrong notes is because um, uh, out of Chopin's etudes, this particular piece has a very uh, particular dissonance to it at the very beginning. Uh, it's singing, it sounds like you're playing out of sync, so I wasn't quite sure the first time uh, when he was playing it, but um, with that other recording, I do believe that's how it's supposed to sound. Okay, actually, let's, let's hear it. I only really know the uh, the intro part of it because it has a very distinct intro part. Isn't that a rule? So did she actually respond to his feelings, or what?
Aw, oh, that's a bad idea, girl. Yeah, this definitely does sound like wrong man. Oh. For her. Oh, hey, it's fixed. It's tomorrow, right? Is Kari speaking from his experience? That's a nice analogy. If that's not romantic, I don't know what is. Like, come on! <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so do they also have all right thinking how he can put his own take on it yeah because when i heard that i, I thought it sounded pretty uh, Pretty accurate, I mean. <laughs> okay. Not literally right outside? All right. And then she's the okay. <laughs> I knew it. The drama there. Okay, she's not gonna be able to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the 
strike. Oh no, she got it. So basically, she's... Uh, no, I think that is... Yep. <laughs> Look how timid she is. <laughs> nice. This is so... Uh... Yeah, it's different. Their roles have reversed. The dialogue in this show! Kuyashi. That's one of the words that's very hard to translate into English. Kuyashi. It's, personally, I would more translate it as regret.
This sounds like Chopin as well. Yeah, probably another etude, basically. Judging by the notes. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. That's all I can say about this series, really. Uh, I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so yet again, another amazing episode, right? I feel like this is kind of, I'm sounding like a broken record right now, but really there's nothing for me to complain about. Like, everything about this episode was just great, even down to, you know, the entire pacing of the anime, such as and Tsubaki's entire sort of, you know, breaking down, um, wallowing in self-pity, self-doubt, and that kind of stuff, but then she instantly gains redemption a little bit later, right? So we're never really put into this sort of melodramatic muck um, that leaves us feeling a little bit unsatisfied, right? This is not what this series is about, at least up to net right now, anyways. It's definitely making us feel very good. But, um, alright, let's talk about a few things, right? Uh, so first of all, let's talk about Kosei's uh, piano competition. So, again, this is, it seems that from the context we're given here, this is a very serious competition, right? Nationwide, ones that would uh, lead pianists to eventually gain fame and fortune, um, and they're doing it by the book, right? Again, I, I mentioned that Chopin is basically a mainstay in any of these piano competitions, especially these uh, more um, general regulated ones, if you will, uh, it's a pretty good guess to to always have Chopin in, somewhere in one of the rounds. And I guess we can talk a little bit about the works of Chopin, especially to, uh, in regards to the etudes, right? Because, um, you know, uh, with the very end, we do see that the other competitors are mostly playing Chopin etudes as well, although I did see a Bach in there. Um, but anyways, about the etudes. So, uh, Chopin's etudes are divided into, I guess you could say, two sets, right? Opus 10 and Opus 25, which is comprised of, I believe, 12? 10? Something, something around those lines, uh, amount of works, right? Um, and the fun, uh, some fun facts about it, etude 10 is dedicated to Franz Liszt, uh, which is another very famous pianist and composer, uh, one who is very well renowned, renowned um, gains his renown for composing some really technically difficult pieces, um, which is why also, you know, at the very upper echelons of competitions, you will always see the competitors bring out a list uh, somewhere in there as well. Because even though, you know, music is not all about technical playing, if you're able to play technically difficult pieces and also provide your own, you know, musical take, musical interpretation of it at the same time, that does give a lot of bonus points, right? So, uh, for me, the, the easiest uh, way of distinction has always been violin competition, you're probably going to see Paganini. Piano competition, you're probably going to see a list um, at the very end, if you will, at the very final rounds. Typically, they'll be in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, Opus 10, the Opus 10 set was dedicated to Franz Liszt, uh, one of Chopin's friends, and interestingly enough, Opus 25 was dedicated, the works there were dedicated to Franz Liszt's mistress, so there's some history there as well, which I'm not going to go into too much detail about. So, um, you know, that's one, one little piece of, um, trivia for you guys. Another part would be, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about why Chopin's etudes are this popular, right? Why are they so prominent and why are they played so much? So this has to do with, uh, you know, the definition of an etude, which is, generally speaking, as I said, it's more of a technically difficult piece that you use for practice or warm-up and so on and so forth, right? It's basically something that's meant to sharpen and own your technical skills. Now, what different what makes Chopin's etudes different from uh, other people other composers is that even though they are technically difficult as well but Chopin actually added a layer of musicality in there it's musically interesting to play as well so if you didn't title it as an etude it could almost it could 
pass for just a regular composition, right? Just a regular piano composition as well, a regular piece of work of music. So um, that is why a lot, lots of people like to play these etudes, right? Because uh, not only is it technically difficult, so you can show off your technical skills, but since it's musically interesting, it's musically um, pleasing, uh, the pianist or the competitors or whatnot are still able to put their own take, you know, their own musical interpretation of this piece. So that is why uh, Chopin Institutes are used so prominently within competitions. So another uh, interesting fact about that. Um, and the thirdly is in regards to what Kosei actually um, picked for his competition. Well, I guess he didn't pick it, Kari picked it. But anyways, so the piece that he was playing is indeed titled uh, Wrong Notes. Well. Uh, so here, also, I need to make a little bit of a clarification. Chopin never named any of his pieces. Any of his his pieces, he only numbered them. Um, so in this case, I believe wrong notes is uh, number five. I believe, um, yeah, Opus twenty five, number five. And it's the people later on who gave it the uh, comp the title name of wrong notes. And to be honest, the first time I heard of this, I thought it was pretty aptly pretty aptly named because it did does seem that. Uh, due to the beginning, the dissonance between the notes at the very beginning, it does seem like somebody is playing the wrong notes um, in some way. It just sounds, uh, it's not harmonically pleasing, if you will, for the beginning passages of it. Even if you're not musically trained, uh, you can probably also like, listen to it and feel, hmm, something feels funny about it, something feels off about it. And that is why it's called wrong notes. And that is indeed one of the reasons why that piece is hard to play because there's a natural dis there's a dissonance there that people would naturally find repulsive and so it just feels unnatural to play in a way so uh, you know the interesting thing here is i'm wondering if uh with kosei's condition right not being able to hear maybe that can work to his advantage if he's playing a piece such as this which relies on the dissonance of the notes um i don't know maybe kari uh put this into account when, when deciding to pick this piece for Kosei? Maybe, maybe not, but I do find it kind of interesting that the guy who can't apparently can't list, hear his own playing is the one playing the uh, etude that is basically a little bit hard on the ears, if you will. So I wonder if there's some sort of uh, relevance in that part. So uh, there we go. That's all the trivia for the music for this episode. or. Uh, not put, not specifically for this episode, but for uh, the works that are going to be played. So, music aside, uh, let's talk a little bit about the story, right? So, uh, again, I, like I said, I absolutely love this episode. Uh, it does remind me of some rom-coms, if you will, a lot of cliché rom-com tropes, but come on, people love this, right? Especially like in the beginning part where Akari went to Kosei's house and then they were caught by Sabaki, like that is entirely... Um, you know, harem or rom-com material 101, right? But still, that had me uh, <laughs> laughing my ass out, so laughing my head off. So uh, I, I absolutely love that. Um, I, in fact, I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't go on for a little bit more, but I guess this isn't exactly a rom-com right now, is it? Um, and of course, the later parts as well, and you know, in terms of the actual, I guess, romance part, if you will, of, you know, the entire part with Kari and uh, Kosei within the music classroom, and then that in part, entire ending scene with um, Kosei, you know, giving Tsubaki a piggyback ride and whatnot, <sighs> just great, just great. The dialogue in this is absolutely amazing. I might even say that the dialogue for this is even better than the music that they're playing, <laughs> believe it or not. I mean, yeah, of course the music they're playing is amazing, but come on, it's it's classical music, right? It's not uh, particularly confined to Your Lie in April. But the dialogue there and the atmosphere and whatnot, uh, I mentioned this last episode as well, I just feel like it's it's amazing, right? That's all I have to say about it. I'm sorry I can't say really much else, but um, that's that. Uh, but then again, uh, since we are using some sort of uh, rom-com uh, perspective to look at this, right? We got the classic childhood friend versus newcomer scenario, right? And if all my time spent, uh, you know, reading rom-com or hair remarks has taught me anything, it's that the newcomer is going to win 99% of the time. Although I guess in this case, you know, circumstances are a little bit different, and they're, it's a little bit special, but still, still. Um, yeah. 
So, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, in terms of other, you know, more serious stuff... Oh, one thing that I am kind of uh, intrigued by as well is in... Um, actually, they mentioned this specifically within this episode. Like, who are you playing for, right? Are you playing for yourself? Are you playing for someone else? And in this part, um, I don't know. I, I feel like this is, mu this is something that might uh, change over time, if you will. Because, like I said at the beginning of this episode, I feel like, uh, you know, Kosei definitely hasn't completely uh, overcame all his demons yet. He still has some, some, some mental blocks, right? He still has some stuff within him that he needs to get out. And... You know, playing for someone else. It sounds nice in in principle, right? But you have to consider one thing. Kosei of old basically played for his mom, his mother, right? Once her, once his mother passed away, he didn't have anything to play for anymore, and so that what was what led to his entire slump in the first place. Right now, it seems that he's playing for the sake of Kari, but is that really a good thing? Right? Um, it sounds romantic and whatnot, but at the same time, you know, what if, you know, potentially in the future car relieves or something or, or whatnot, then what then, right? So, I don't know. I feel like, at you know, when everything is said and done, you should still be playing because you want to play, playing for yourself, in a sense. It doesn't matter other people's opinions or whatnot, you just play music because you want to play music. I feel like that is, um, well, then again, I'm... <laughs> Like, I'm not exactly a professional musician, right? So I can't really talk that much. But all I can say is, at least from, for me, from a personal perspective, I always play music because I want to play music. I'm not playing it for any specific someone or uh, to meet the expectations of any specific people. I like music, so I play music. And I feel like that is probably what most people also, um, you know, also play that's also why most people play music. They play it for themselves because they themselves want to enjoy it, not for the sake of others. So I wonder if we're going to have this kind of uh, perspective change or, um, you know, yeah, like, yeah, this kind of change before we reach the end of this series, right? Um, that does, or maybe not even end of the series, like maybe just mid-series, we're, we're, we'll begin to see this kind of shift, right? This is obviously, you know, we're, we're literally like, what, one-fourth into the, uh, the actual uh, series as a whole, but still, does seem to be something worth looking out for. So, anyways, that's been my review of episode 6 of Your Light in April. I will see you guys next time as well. So, great series so far, hope to see more, and... Well, of course I'm going to see more, right? I'm going to I'm going to be see, watching the entire series, but definitely I am enjoying this a lot. And so hopefully you guys are enjoying rewatching this with me as well. So anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.